Government legislation will soon mean that here in the UK that all new builds or serious redevelopments here will require an electric vehicle charger to be fitted. Now, if you're from outside the UK, I wanna know, do you think that this is right, the way we're gonna be looking at it? Do you currently do it in your country? Is it a forced part of legislation? Is it in law? Well, what does it mean here in the UK? Does it mean free pin plugs? Does it mean loads of wire spurs for connecting electric vehicle chargers in the future? Well, today's video, I'm gonna looking at why I think the government just haven't gone far enough. Now, as many of you watching may already have electric vehicles and anyone who has an electric vehicle at the moment will tell you that the speed it charges at at a home is kind of irrelevant because you come home, you plug it in, you go bed, you get up in eight, nine hours. If the car's took nine hours, eight, nine hours to charge, it doesn't matter, you've been asleep. But having faster electric vehicle chargers does mean that you can take advantage of cheaper rate electricity at night, maybe using the referral that I use at Octopus Go down below for 50 pound for you and 50 pound for me when they are allowing new customers to sign up. I can get energy at five pence a kilowatt hour at night, and which means that based on the new octopus rates, I could average 14p for all my electric use just by using my electric car to offset all my other electric uses. Now, that does mean that the government have set a minimum charge speed of seven kilowatts, but that's just not far enough. EV adoption is growing at a rapid rate. It's accelerating massively. In fact, four years ago when I used to see another electric car on the road, it was either the one that my wife was driving one that my dad was driving, or one that I sold to a local customer. Now I can drive pretty much five minutes away from my house and see a flurry of electric cars that I've never seen or sold before, and new cars pretty much all the time, which is great, and adoption is just gonna increase. But as this adoption increases, it's gonna cause a problem with the local, national, and maybe more regional parts of the power grid and having seven kilowatt charging is gonna be a problem on that. Now, 22 kilowatt charging gives us a couple of things. It doesn't just give us faster charging, it gives us some other benefits for the grid. Although you may not need to charge that fast, charging that fast in a certain period of time may be beneficial to you and the national grid. And the reason for that is there may be a point of time where in a half an hour slot, the power in that half an hour slot is particularly cheap because of excess wind energy or excess power that needs to be used. And if it's not used, they may have to turn off some wind turbines or some green generation. And as we go towards a greener future, these power demands, these power shifts, when the power is going to be used, is gonna be way more important for what we're paying in our end pocket. Now, if for example, that half an hour period, we needed to charge our electric car based on the government's new proposal on new housing estates, of seven kilowatts, it means that you're only gonna be pulling about three and a half kilowatts of power into your battery. However, if you went for a 22 kilowatt charger, you'd obviously pull about 11 kilowatts in that battery. Now, most electric cars at the moment currently sold have a max free phase charging of 11 kilowatts, but still, even charging only 11 kilowatts, you're still gonna be adding significantly more power 11 kilowatts free phase then you're going to be pulling at seven kilowatts single phase now there is also some aspects to deal with the way the grid works locally and how balancing works so let's just try and make it not too complicated let's just say you've got three houses in a row and each of those house will be on what we call a different phase so house one phase one house two phase two house three phase three. Now, just to make things simple, we'll now move to house 11, which will also be single phase, house 22, which will also be uh, phase two, and house 33, which will be phase three. We're just trying to keep it nice and simple in this way I'm explaining it. Now, let's just pretend that house one and house 11 both decide to charge their electric car. House two doesn't, and house three does. What this causes is imbalances in the phase of electricity. So across those three phases, we wanna try and keep the phase, the amount of power coming out of them balanced across all houses. And previously, house streets have mainly balanced themselves because most people cook at the same time, 
do things at the same time and any other small demands don't really send the grid out too much but lots of seven kilowatt chargers could unbalance the grid where this advantage comes of using a free phase charger is you're pulling the same amount of kilowatts per phase at all points so it keeps the grid balanced so even if you decide to plug your car in and someone on the same phase doesn't or the other phases don't it will keep those phases balanced because you're using all the available electricity across those phases but i know what's going to happen you're going to say to me it costs a lot of money for you to go free phase which is true but of course we're talking about new builds or redevelopments here that are already digging a trench to put the power in the money is not really in the cable it's in the man hours to dig that trench to put the power to your thing now north western power they will put in free phase power to all new builds estate as standard now there is going to be some more costs for the builders to put free phase boards in or free phase heads in there's some some tiny additional costs but the costs there are tiny compared to what it would cost you as a homeowner in the future to redig that road and put free phase in and as we move to more and you know more green energy more green stuff we're going to need more free phase power because we're going to be using more power as we get rid of gas boilers and go towards heat pump systems we are going to need that free phase power system to help balance the grid help use the power more efficiently in fact if you go anywhere in europe where they use a lot of power we'll use uh, sweden as an example because they've got lots of saunas all the houses are free phase to help that electricity demand balance properly over the national grid now talking about heat pumps i do have a really interesting video on my channel about heat pumps at the octopus heat center so make sure you check that out as always i want to know what you think below in the comments let me know what your car charges are how many kilowatts can your car suck from a free phase charger is it 11 kilowatts or is your manufacturer still only fitting a seven kilowatt charger is there actually any three and a half kilowatt charging cars around anymore let me know down below in the comments now we're going to move to what type of charges have been defined in this legislation now the brand of charger isn't defined however there is some legislation soon coming out in the uk that will define the type of electric vehicle chargers sold which will basically force them to put smart chargers in and certain approved chargers so they're not just going to be banging any old charger in that's dumb can't do anything smart intelligent they are going to be forced to fit certain types of electric vehicle chargers however there's no definition if it has to be tethered or untethered so if you have an older electric vehicle or thinking about an old electric vehicle then bear that in mind they may fit tethered but they're more likely to fit untethered chargers because it's cheaper for them now it's going to be one charger per dwelling however they are going to be told they have to cable for every additional parking space so if you have a four bedroom house with four spaces they will have to fit one charger plus wiring to those other free car parking spaces so if your car parking spaces are not near the house or near power supply they will have to cable them or route them ready for cable so you can put an electric vehicle charger yourself in the future if you require two three or four additional chargers this is why again we should be moving on to the 22 kilowatt charging because if you have got four spaces three spaces then pulling seven kilowatt across those spaces is going to cause some problems i do also think that they should also be routing some of these charging solutions with cat5 cable to each charger so if there is a, a a demand response some sort of communication to make sure you don't blow your main amp fuse now what i want to know in below in the comments is if you're buying a four or five bedroom house is one ev charger per dwelling enough because i think that the government should maybe say if it's over three bedrooms and there is two parking spaces there should be one charger per space let me know what you think in the in the comments now one thing i'm really happy about is this actually also applies slightly to commercial properties which means that a commercial property which is making renovations or a new shopping center new cinema they will also be required to put electric vehicle charges in and it's a set number of spaces depending on how much they're doing or how much they're developing there is some conditions that let them get away with fitting them if the infrastructure cost runs over a certain price but in theory all new complexes or complexes going under you know renovations that are over 25 percent will be required to fit electric vehicle chargers which means 
more destination charges. Yes, they won't be free. Yes, they'll be charged, but there'll be more and more charges. And this is what we need to see now at the moment in this re revolution of electric cars. So I'm, you know, very, very, very happy with the government on this part of the legislation. Let me know again what you think in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.